Hi there fellow DJs, thanks for tuning in. Uh, this is going to be a video on how to beat match. I'm going to show you the techniques that I've found work best for teaching uh, beginner DJs how to beat match. For those that don't know, beat matching means you've got to sync up the beats when you're bringing in a new song. Uh, you've got to sync up those beats to the uh, beats going on on the old song. So this means two things. One, the beats over here need to be the same speed as the beats that are going on over here. On your other turntable. So before we even play any music, it's important to understand how to beat match vis-a-vis uh, -vis the features of your turntables. So for those that are interested, these are CDJ uh, 2000s by Pioneer. The mixer is a DJM 800 uh, mixer. You get my headphones here. So you've got two uh, pieces of hardware on your turntables or decks that are involved and used in beat matching. One is the jog wheel, which spins, okay? And the other is the pitch fader or pitch slider. It's very important to understand the function that these two things play and how they're different. And if you understand them well, it will really help you in learning to beat match and save you some time in learning quicker. So the jog wheel, think of it as something that advances the track either forwards when I turn it this way clockwise or something that uh, moves the track backwards uh, when I turn it counterclockwise this way. So note that we're not increasing the speed of the track. We're only adjusting the track's position relative to the other track over here. So what that sounds like is this. Okay, you can hear that track temporarily speed up. You hear the pitch raise because human ears perceive uh, intonation and notes as higher or pitched up when the speed of the tr a song is increased. However, it's only a temporary effect because I'm moving the track fa faster to move it or advance it. If I do it the other way, it temporarily slows down, but the key point is that it's temporary. So that's the jog wheel and you use it to move the tracks forwards or back. If you've got two cars speeding along together at exactly the same speed and you move this pitch uh, fader faster, it's gonna move it like this. So now the songs aren't locked together, uh, they're like, like this with the beats together, one is moved ahead. So how's that gonna sound like? Well, let me get the same track on this deck as I have on this deck. Okay, so we're playing it over here. Now if I play it over here, okay, I'm hitting play at the same time, but now I'm gonna purposely advance one. Now let's bring the volume up. Okay, it sounds bad because this track is moved forwards vis-a-vis -vis this track. If I move this back now, I can fix it. So what does your pitch fader do? Pitch fader actually controls the speed that the song is playing at. As an example, I'll take it way too down slow and I'll take it way, way fast on this end here. So here's how that's going to sound. Hey, that's normal speed. That's the speed uh, the song is meant to be played at. I don't know if you can see this, but it's 125 BPMs or beats per minute. Okay, that's an extreme over pitch, way too fast hear the pitch go up in volume uh, in intonation again. That's slowed way down at 112.5 beats per minute. So how can these two things be used together during beat matching? Well, the easy answer is 
You don't need to use both of them together. You can simply beat match only using the jog wheel, provided that you've got the same, uh, the two tracks already set up at the same speed. So on CDJs like this, that display the beats per minute, 125 and 125, if I set them to the same speed, it's easy. I know I don't need to really do anything with the pitch faders. All I need to do is I'm playing one track over here. And in my headphones, which is when the cues are illuminated, I can hear both of these tracks. In my headphones, this is what I would be doing. Pressing the cue button on here to find the first beat of this track. And if it's not already set up to find it and set it up with a cue point on the on the turntable. And you can tap along. You see a lot of DJs do this just to get to the rhythm of things. So count the beats. One, two, three, four. And play. Just by ear, I got that pretty close. That's off. This one's too far behind. So I can jog the wheel forwards. Let me get a second song, actually, a different song so that you can hear them both. Okay, so here's how to beat match without using a pitch fader. This song is playing in your headphones, find the cue point for this other song, count it in, and play. Okay, that time I'm a little bit off, right? Actually, I'm way off. No, it's the other way. Okay, that took some time to find, but that's not completely unrealistic to what happens when you're playing live in a very loud nightclub and you are struggling to hear what's going on in your headphones because the room is so loud and your headphones are turned way up and uh, you're, you're trying to beat match. So let's try that again and see if I can do it a bit more realistically where the second song comes in close to on beat but not perfect. Okay, that's a little off. Probably this one needs to be advanced forwards. Okay, so then you hear that, they're, they're locked together, they sound good. If I move this one forwards or back, again, it's gonna go off. Forwards, back to fix it. Okay, so that's it in a nutshell. Now, how can we use the pitch faders and why would we ever use them? Well, if you're in a live mix already, remember I showed you how this, how it sounds to move the jog wheel if you move it aggressively. That affects the sound of the song. So, particularly where you have vocals going on, or some uh, melodic notes, lingering long notes, for instance, or other harmonies. If you jog the wheel too much to do your beat matching, if the beats start slipping off of one another, because they don't stay perfect, the software is not perfect, the MP3s are not perfect, certainly vinyl records are not perfect. Of course, vinyl is the hardest thing to beat match on. I'm gonna do a separate tutorial on that with my uh, vinyl players later on, so watch for that video. But if you want to avoid this sound during a live mix, then you can use the pitch fader to temporarily speed up the song or slow down the song to adjust it to the other song until you get the beats going perfectly together and then you're just going to return it back to the same speed because if you leave it uh, in a slow down position or in a speed up position, that's not going to last forever, right? It's going to keep changing it. So remember, this actually affects 
This pitch slider actually affects the speed the song is played at. So let me show you an example of how I can manipulate a beat match and, and actually beat match just using the pitch fader instead of the jog wheel. So this track's playing over here. Again, this would be in my headphones, but I'm doing it live so you can hear it. that song. Okay. You can hear the beats are off. I'll fix it with the pitch slider. Speed it up. Slow it down. slowed it down until it sounded good, and then I returned the pitch fader until the screen read 125 beats per minute. Because these numbers change with the adjustment of the pitch slider. Let me try doing that one more time. Okay, I got lucky, and it's, it came in perfect. Not perfect. Speed this up. Now I'll put it back. Now that sounds good, I put it back to 125. You might not be able to see, but these screens go to, it goes, it says 125 point, and there's point tenth of a decimal place. So what I'm typically doing, if the beats are a little bit off, is I'm making this to 125.2 or 3. Or if I need to slow down, 124.7 or 8. And if you do it, if you make that adjustment by 0.2 or 0.3 of a BPM, you only have to usually wait a few seconds before the beats get closer together between the two songs and sound good again. And then you just return it to 125. So the best way I recommend to, to start uh, beat matching, if you've never done this before, is take the same song and put it on both turntables. Set them to the same speed, okay? This song sounds like this. Okay, I've set it to 126 beats per minute. Same song over here, same beats per minute, 126. So, what you want to do is try to just start the second song on the one beat on the one beat over here. So you're gonna count the beats. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Right? One. I hit the play on one over here. I'm gonna bring the volume up now. Okay, sounds a little bit off. So you should try and adjust this jog wheel or the pitch fader, whatever your preference is, until they sound tight. There. Since it's the same song, it's, it's easy to, to hear if the beats are going off out of sync and sound bad. Will sound like that. So you need to fix this one or this one. Right, so that's step one. You should be able to get that if you listen carefully and use your ears and use this method. You should be able to get that down within probably, I'd say, an hour of practice, maybe less even. So, how to simulate real beat matching on vinyl and really train your ears how to beat match and then really know what you're doing? 
what you're going to do is you're not going to rely as a crutch on these numbers on the screens of your turntables if you have turntables with these sorts of screens. Let's show you the beats per minute. Most modern day turntables or controllers, CD players, multiplayers have this feature. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to cover up the screen. You really only need to cover up one of them, but I'll, uh, I'll cover both just to make the point. So now I cannot see uh, what the speeds are and I don't know if it's 126 or not now because I'm going to scramble the pitch fader and I'll leave this one a little bit over the zero so it's going to be probably between 126 BPM and 127 and this one here who knows so here's what you do you're going to play this song and you've got to use your ears is it very fast or is it very slow Okay, so we'll make it a bit faster. What I'll do is I'll even pick a different song so it's uh, more challenging. Okay, cover that up again. This song sounds like this. This song sounds like this. So here's what you're gonna be doing uh, to practice beat matching and you can do this in your headphones like you're mixing live. the cue to hit that first beat on this new song. Okay, that sounded horrible. What do we do? This song clearly is nowhere close to the speed of this song. It sounded to me slow, so I'm going to try moving the pitch fader here, stop the song, put it back to the initial cue point, that first kick, and try this again. Okay, not bad, but not great either. Sounds like this one might still be going too slow, I think. I'm gonna try putting it faster on the pitch. Try it again. Okay, what you see I'm doing there that's very important is I'm using the pitch fader and the jog wheel together because I don't know which way I really need to move the pitch fader yet when I first get them going together. It sounds like the beats are going off and I don't want to move this too extreme and make it worse so I tried spinning the jog wheel backwards because I felt like this song was too fast. That's what I could sense in my ears. So I, I move this jog wheel backwards a lot and I hear that it's getting better. So what does that tell me? That tells me this song was going too fast. So I need to start moving the pitch fader down this way to slow it down. So that's how you use these things to work them together to get information quickly and adjust the beat match as fast as possible. Let's try again. Wait for the beat to come over here. sounds good, we need to wait a while because if the beats aren't exact, after a while, if one's slower or faster, they'll start to slip out of place again. Just like they have now. Okay, I know I'm close now because that time it started to go, this one was going too fast. Okay, now they sound pretty good. I think I nailed it, and here's how you test yourself. Now you, after you get the beat match and it sounds good and you think you're done, you're gonna take away what you've covered up the screens with and see how you did. Over here I've got 128 beats per minute, 0.7, 128.7. Over here I've got 128.6. So by ear, I was able to match the beats to 0.10 of a uh, beat, which is pretty good. It's not perfect, but it's good enough 
for at least probably a 30 second period and then I'm just going to need to make a small adjustment with a jog wheel. So if you're mixing live and you're mixing two songs together for about a minute, you might need to make a couple adjustments. But that's what I would recommend. If you've purchased Pioneer CDJ turntables or any other turntable that has uh, a function that shows you BPMs, uh, practice for a while looking at them for a couple hours. Figure out how to use the jog wheels and the basic principles of beat matching, but do not rely on that forever. Try and cover these up and, and use that trick that I've taught you in this video so that you can really train your ear because if you rely on the screens forever, uh, you won't truly know how to beat match and you'll never have any shot at being able to play vinyl records if you ever get the chance. And uh, also, if you're playing live, if you become a club DJ, it's a really good skill to know how to beat match properly because sometimes the equipment will malfunction, you may not have a screen like this that's illuminated, or you may be playing on an older turntable that doesn't uh, hold time as well. For example, Pioneer CDJ 900s, I find, don't hold time as well as the newer models like these 2000s, and you have to pay a lot closer attention to your beat matching. Even if this deck says 125, and this deck says 125, if the songs are a bit off, the software is a bit off, or it's an older CDJ, like a CDJ 900, I find that they will, even though they say they're going the same speed, uh, even after I've done the beat match, I know that one of them is either a little faster or a little slower by say 0.2 or 0.3 of a BPM, and you'll need to listen carefully, use your ears, and make adjustments. So good luck, thanks for watching, happy uh, DJing.